So how do we end up with child pew as being the best correlate of the stage of cirrhosis? So importantly, we have more difficulty in trying to figure out what the liver is doing for a particular drug in a way that's not true for the kidney. You know, I can get an estimated GFR from simple labs, you know, in one lab, and I can pretty much figure out what the person's renal function is. But the liver is not the kidney. There is no one simple test. As I've mentioned, the AST and ALT are, are actually the wrong tests in this context. So how did the FDA end up recommending trial Q as the best way to decide if drug doses needed to be altered for new medication starts? Well, the FDA reviewed 57 pharmacokinetic studies in patients with hepatic impairment of varying degrees among new drug applications in the mid-90s. They found that 55% of those applications used the child pew scale to assess hepatic impairment. Of those studies surveyed, 19 also had estimated oral drug clearance in normals and in patients with more than one child pew category. Among those 19 studies, 17 demonstrated a significant and negative correlation with a correlation coefficient between 0.5 and 1 between oral drug clearance and hepatic impairment as defined by child pew. Most importantly, 16 of these 17 studies showed impaired hepatic metabolism in patients with the moderate child pew category, which is child pew B. From this, the FDA concluded that, yes, there may be other approaches to assess varying degrees of hepatic impairment, but a child pew categorization should still be included for each patient as part of a new drug application, meaning if you want to have language about the use of your medication in hepatic impairment, you have to do studies for people who are child A, child pew B, and child pew C. The child pew classification is the best and easiest way for any clinician to stage somebody's severity of cirrhosis and therefore decide if they need to alter initial drug dosages. There are things done for research purposes only, what we call dynamic tests, where we actually would inject people with drugs and look at the ratio of the drug to metabolite. But the FDA said, look, we've looked at those, and they're actually not superior to the child pew classification. Again, I've said it numerous times, but it's cirrhosis, which predicts changes in drug kinetics, not inflammation. And now, as of 2021, the child pew classification is the best proxy for changes in the ability to metabolize medications. All modern package inserts have been standardized, and in Section 8, which is on hepatic impairment, look at that subsection, and it will comment on whether the medication has been studied in child pew B or C patients, and if so, whether there is a dose adjustment or whether the medication is permitted at all. In some instances, the manufacturer simply did not do the studies. The medication was never studied in people with hepatic impairment, and there will be language to the extent that it is contraindicated in patients with hepatic impairment simply due to the absence of data. In those circumstances, other choices might be needed. Or, for example, like paliperidone, it was very clear that there's no data for people with severe hepatic impairment. So if you had somebody who was child PUC, you would have to find an antipsychotic for which that type of data is in the package insert. 